Hey everyone, this is Ninjax doing a strategy video for you guys, and the topic for today is the secrets to surviving pub games. Uh, now, there are a lot of guides out there who will teach you how to build a hero, what skills to go for, what items to go for, and even give you a general guide as to how to play that hero throughout the entire game. Uh, but of course, there's a lot more to Dota than just memorizing these guides. So this tutorial is designed for players who know how to build most of the heroes and are looking for that extra edge to take them to that next level. So if you apply the concepts that I'm going to be talking about, it will improve your game, for sure. Uh, so anyways, going back to the topic, the topic is about surviving pub games. And what's the secret to surviving these pub games? Um, more specifically, it's about reducing the amount of deaths that you get. I don't need to tell you this, but dying in Dota sucks. Uh, you lose gold, the enemy gets gold and XP. You lose time waiting for it to respawn, and if you want to TP back to the tower, you got to invest more gold to get that TP's grow. So anyways, uh, just by avoiding all these unnecessary deaths that you get throughout a uh, Dota game, you're going to be playing better 100% of the time, every time. So anyways, what is this secret? When I tell you what the secret is, it's going to sound very obvious. But as of right now, uh, when I do a quick search on YouTube, there aren't a lot of videos talking about this issue specifically and I think this uh, topic is important enough where it needs to be discussed and shared to a lot of players. So anyways, the secret to surviving pub games and consistently reducing the amount of deaths you get is positioning. Positioning, positioning, positioning. What is my position? Where are my enemies? And am I in a dangerous spot? Uh, so if you understand all these three things throughout the entire game, you're going to find that your death, death counts are going to go down. If you have a sense to figure out when you're in danger, you can easily avoid those deaths before they even occur. Anyways, I have prepared two quick replays for you guys to illustrate my point, so I'm going to jump right into Okay, jumping into our first replay here, we're going to be watching this replay in the perspective of Tidehunter and Silencer. What's going to happen is they're going to go top lane, and together they're going to die four times within six minutes. So I will fast forward this and show you all those deaths. I'm not going to comment on them too much in the beginning, but what I want you to focus on is ask yourself how they could have avoided those deaths just by having better positioning and better awareness of the enemy's positioning. So here we go. First kill is going to come up pretty soon here. Alright, that's number one. Pretty simple. Going to fast forward, forward to number two. Coming up in see here. Seven minutes and thirty seconds into the replay. As of right now, the lane is going to be pretty safe and a lot of it is because Tidehunter and Silencer are in a pretty good position, pretty close to the tower, and as a result, they're going to be pretty safe. But now the lane is going to push up, and I will slow it down just a little bit here, and now going to real time. That's number two, also pretty simple, and finally, the last one. Alright, coming up right about now, so I'm going to slow down, and this is the last one before I pause. Alright, that's it. Pretty easy. You got six minutes into the game, four kills, four carry. Pretty good, right? So, the question is, how could have they avoid those deaths with just better understanding of position? And the answer is pretty simple. Uh, first of all, you gotta be more aware of the enemy's position. What they could have done here is perhaps put one ward here, so whenever Venomancer moves up to do a flank, they know immediately when to back off and avoid those deaths. And since they didn't, didn't, they didn't choose to do so, what they could have done is just put yourself a little bit further behind. 
what happened was a lot of times the silencer was here, uh, the tie hunter was over here, and they want to get those last hits. But as, as you saw, the juggernaut just moved up, Venomancer are wrapped around from behind, and the distance from here to the tower is so far that they're going to die guaranteed. A smarter player would have adjusted their plays and put themselves maybe over uh, here, just outside of XP, uh, just inside of XP range, but then he can move outside back to the tower if they choose to dive. So how can you apply these concepts in your own games? Now, whenever you're going to be in the hard lane, such as this one, a Venomancer and a Juggernaut, you're going to have to be extra aware of your positioning and the enemy's positioning. You have to ask yourself, how can I die in this lane? And in this situation, it's pretty simple. I can die if Blade Fury comes up and Venomous Gale comes from behind and slows me down. And once you figure out how you can die and what position you can be in danger, all you have to do is just avoid it. The problem with this lane and the Tie Hunter and Silencer is that they didn't do, they didn't do that. They didn't adjust their plays at, at all. Uh, we showed them how we play right at first blood. It was just Blade Fury in the Gale. And once they figured out that lane and that combo, they could have adjusted. They could have positioned themselves over here, maybe bought a war and put it, put it over here. And all those deaths could have been avoided. But since they failed to adjust, we just punished them over and over again with the exact same tactic. Because they put themselves in a position where they could be punished and killed. And that's exactly what happened. Okay? So hopefully this, uh, this replay gives you a little bit of an idea of how to adjust your place inside a game so that this does not happen to you. Okay, this is the last replay. It's going to be a little bit of an analysis of my own play. Uh, this is a game where I play Huskar and I lost. So it is always a good idea to watch your own games where you lost. You can actually see how you died and how you could avoid them in the future. Anyways, I am going to be laning against a Brute Mother. And just a side note, always buy Sentry Wars as soon as possible if you're laning against a Brute Mother. You want to shut her down early, not later. When she gets her Soul Ring, it's going to be a lot tougher to push her out of the lane. Whereas if you do it before, that's when she's weak, that's when she has low HP, and that's when you should uh, press your advantage. And I actually do a pretty good job early game just shutting her down. I kill her multiple times, but it is during the mid game where I lost control and I died a lot of times where I could have avoided them. Alright, so the first death is going to be at 15 minutes and 30 seconds. I'm just going to quickly uh, go over what happens so you can look for it. What's going to happen is I'm going to push up. I'm going to take their tower, which is going to be denied. But right after the tower goes down, I move forward to engage instead of backing off and retreating. And that split second of a wrong decision costed me my life. Alright, so as you can see, I'm killing Brute Mother multiple times. It's actually pretty good right now. So, it is gonna come out in 15 minutes. I will slow down just a little bit when that comes up. Okay. Slow it down to two times now. It's going to come up pretty soon. So once again, uh, I'm going to show you what to look for. What's going to happen is, again, I'm going to push the tower. It's going to go down. Invoker is actually going to show up. And when I see Invoker, I should have backed off. But what I did was I moved forward to engage. And that put myself in a bad position, and I died. Okay. After I clear this creep wave, I'm going to push forward. And Chen is actually going to come and help me push the tower down also. So as you can see, Invoker is already in position. And he is level 9 against... Uh, I'm also... I'm level 10. So I'm a little bit overconfident at this stage. Anyways, here it comes. The tower is going to go down. And here, Invoker comes in. I engage. They initiate on me. And I die immediately. Just like that. It was a very short split second thing. But definitely a situation where I could have avoided that death. Uh, again, if I took that tower and immediately backed off, the chance creep would have uh, covered my retreat. And as a result, I didn't need to die there. But I did the opposite. I moved forward. I tried to engage the invoker. Uh, he cold snapped. 
and Brute Mother used Spawn Brutling and just simply nuked me down. Okay, so moving on to the second death here. It's going to be at 18 minutes and 30 seconds. What's going to happen there is I'm going to try and gank mid, and I'm going to fail miserably. <laughs> Okay, so, now, what happened is, I see uh, Ancient Apparition in middle, by himself, he's trying to go on Storm Spirits, but I wanted to kill him right now, he looks vulnerable, but my mistake was there was a ward right here, they saw me coming, Lycan is going to come in, and Invoker is going to come in, they know exactly where I am, they engage, nuked me down, no chance. Alright, just like that, no chance. So my point here is, again, I put myself in that bad position. I walked right through the ward, uh, and as a result, they saw me coming, I died, no chance. Moving on to the third one. This third one here is actually pretty, uh, pretty interesting. It's a big team fight that's going to happen here at the bottom tower. What's going to happen is, uh, I kill Lycan and burn his Aegis, but instead of retreating, I moved forward again to be over-aggressive. And after that, uh, Lycan respawned with his Aegis and I was surrounded. So let's move forward to that time, about 22 minutes and 30 seconds. Alright, so let's go back to real time. So as you can see, the enemy team is gathering for a push. Four people here, and here Lycan with the Aegis. Looks like people are starting to do some skirmishes. Here's the Howl. And Dragonite is going to get initiated on. And now everybody's going to start moving. And this is where I dive on Lycan. Lycan gets focused down. The Aegis gets burned, but then I moved forward. I was over aggressive. I tried to kill them, chase them down. But now Lycan respawns. I get surrounded and I get focused down. And the bad thing about this is my team is actually going to die as a result. Uh, I believe uh, I believe Windrunner is going to die. Uh, Storm Spirit gets teleported back. Yes, Windrunner does go down. But the point there is, after I killed Lycan right here, I could have backed off to the safety of my tower. Instead, I moved forward and tried to chase Invoker and Ancient Apparition over here. Uh, what that does is it does not only put myself in a bad position, but it put my team in a bad position because they were trying to support me. Uh, one person was over here, one person was over here. Whereas if I had retreated, the whole team could have been in this position where it would have been uh, much safer. So as a result, I got punished for that, my team got punished for that. It was a bad play due to bad positioning. And there is going to be one more death I want to show you. And that's it for this replay. Uh, it's going to happen in 33 minutes. What's going to happen there is the enemy team is going to push bottom lane, tier 2, and Storm Spirit is going to get caught out of position. I TP in to try and save, uh, save Storm Spirit, but I put myself in a bad position and died also. So I'm just going to fast forward for now to get to that position. A key note of this game is that I actually did well early game. As you saw, I killed Brute Mother multiple times as Huskar, which is pretty awesome. But it was these subtle in-game decisions during the mid-game were costing me multiple lives, or I could have avoided them instead. So it's going to come up pretty soon here after the pause. Alright, more pauses, more pauses, and here we go. Let me just slow it down to two times here. So as you can see, there are a lot of enemies in the bottom lane right now. There is Invoker, there is Lycan, and soon Night Stalker, Ancient Apparition, and Brute Mother is going to join up for a bottom push. Moving along. So now, Storm Spirit is going to move in. It's going to try and defend. And I'm going to TP in to try and help him. Uh, at this stage, I could have been a little bit more aware of the enemy's position. I should have predicted that all five of them were there. I TP in, and uh, we were just too outnumbered. I get focused down immediately, and I die. Simple as that. Uh, what I could have done instead was TP to this tower, 
and then move forward or to over here the defender's tower instead of tp right there they moved in focused me down no chance anyways now the point of this video is to show you that the four deaths that i have i could have easily avoided those deaths it wasn't because my teammates were bad or i had a bad skill build or item build it's nothing like that it was just me putting myself in a dangerous position and i got punished four times so with that said, I encourage all of you to look through your replays and see how you died. And I can assure you that most of your deaths can be avoided if you didn't put yourself in that position to begin with. So once you become more aware of these positional mistakes, you can begin to consciously correct them in your future games. Uh, during your games, just try and ask yourself over and over again, what is my position? It's, is it safe? Or my enemy's position? Can they jump on me? Can they punish me? And once you become more aware and more conscious of your positioning, you're going to see that uh, your death counts, death counts go down. And of course, this requires practice as with anything else. But then if you stay consistent with uh, positioning yourself in the correct places and putting yourself in safe spots, you're going to see your death, count, death counts go down consistently. And uh, as a result, you're going to have far more enjoyable games in the future. So anyways, I hope you guys learned something from this. Once again, the secret to surviving pups consistently is to just not die from these stupid positional mistakes. Once you remove them, then you're going to consistently perform a lot better. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you do like it, please uh, thumbs up, subscribe, leave your comments below, and keep the flaming to the minimum. Alright? Have fun, good luck, and I'll see you guys next time.